Hi guys, hello, welcome to the live or welcome if you are watching this later when I upload it to my channel. Today we are talking about how to list a product that converts into sales, how to convert your views and visits into actual sales. Yesterday on my Instagram stories, I mentioned how this is going to be a very lengthy class. There is a lot to go through, um, so I just want to jump right into it so we can get started. I don't want to waste a lot of time just because there is a lot to go through. If you guys are joining, make sure to use the chat to introduce yourself, tell me your name, where you're from, or even what's the biggest struggle with your Etsy shop right now. I always like to know what you are currently having a hard time with because that way I can create content either here on my Instagram, on my TikTok, whatever it is, create content that is going to help you with your Etsy journey. Um, I feel like I had something else to say. I don't know, but let's just jump right into it. I am going to quickly set up my presentation. Just give me one second. Okay. I'm gonna make myself smaller. It's just gonna look a little weird. But bear with me. Okay. And I always say this, but if I'm looking down, it's because I have the chat on my phone. So I'm just looking at the chat. And throughout this presentation, if we have time, I will answer your questions at the end. But throughout this presentation, if you think of a question, just use the chat to ask. And then if I don't have time to answer questions at the end, just know that you can always message me, DM me on Instagram with your question. So let's get started. Today, if you don't know, we're talking about how to create Etsy listings that convert into sales. So basically, how to have a high conversion rate on Etsy. Why is it not working? There we go. <laughs> My social medias, I always mention my social medias because I know some people are subscribed to my YouTube channel, but they don't follow me on Instagram or they follow me on TikTok, but they don't follow me on Instagram. And I highly recommend that you follow me in all platforms because I try my best to keep my content very different on each single platform. So I never, if I post an Instagram reels, I will not be posting it on TikTok and vice versa. I try to keep my content very different from all social medias. So make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I have the link down below for you guys. And also, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure to do it. I have a new video every single week. So make sure to do that. Okay, let's just jump right into it, right? Why should you focus on your conversion rate? And also, you guys, um, let me know if the sound is good. I, I'm, If no one has said anything on the chat, I'm sure that it is good. But if you have any problems with the sound, let me know. But why should you focus on your conversion rate? As an Etsy coach, as someone who talks about Etsy and helps people with their Etsy shop, with my students, with my clients, it always seems like people are very focused on getting more traffic to their Etsy shop. I want more views and visits. How do I do my Etsy SEO? Should I do Etsy ads? How do I promote on social media? Should I have a Pinterest? All the things that will help with your traffic. But sometimes the problem here is not the traffic. The problem is no matter how much traffic you get, you are just not converting them into sales. So here's a little scenario to, for you to think about. Let's say you have a thousand visits a month and the average price of your product is $50. If your conversion rate is 1.5%, that means that you will get 15 sales and $750 in revenue. But if your conversion rate is at 5%, you will get 50 sales and 
$2,500 in revenue. So you see, you didn't even need to increase your traffic and you have improved your revenue. So sometimes it's not about the traffic or how many people are seeing your listings or your Etsy shop. It's about you converting those people into actual shoppers. So that's why today, we are talking about that conversion rate. I'm not going to talk about Etsy SEO. I'm not going to talk about how to get more people to your Etsy shop. I'm going to be talking about how to actually convert those people into shoppers. And a high conversion rate also helps with your Etsy SEO, ranking your products higher in the Etsy search engine algorithm and bringing you more traffic. If you have a low conversion rate, no matter how good your Etsy SEO is, no matter how good your titles are, your tags are, Etsy will stop showing your listings to shopper. That has happened with me in the past where I was getting a lot of views and visits to my Etsy shop because I was promoting it on TikTok. But on TikTok, I'm an Etsy coach. So obviously people out of curiosity were looking into my Etsy shop because they wanted to see what I sell, what my Etsy shop looks like. They weren't necessarily my target market, which is brides to be and moms to be. So what happened is I got a lot of views and visits, didn't necessarily convert those people into shoppers. My conversion rate really decreased and Etsy stopped showing my products to people. And you do not want that to happen. So that's why it is also so important for you to always pay attention to your conversion rate because a low conversion rate, Etsy will not show your listings to shoppers. So what is a good conversion rate? A good conversion rate for Etsy sellers is between 3% and 5%, but definitely above 3%. In order to see your conversion rate, you can go to your shop manager, then click on stats to see your overall shop conversion rate. And then if you wanna see a conversion rate for a specific listing, what you have to do is go to the stats of that listing and then do number of sales, divided by number of visits times 100. And you got to make sure that that number is above a 3%. So while we go through this, through this presentation, my advice for you is to write down a list of things that we will go over and create a checklist for yourself. So throughout this whole presentation, I'm going to be talking about different things that you should be paying attention for your Etsy shop and for your listings. And I'm also going to be in each of those specific things, I'm going to be talking about things that you should be doing. So I suggest you to write everything down and create kind of like a checklist for yourself to make sure that you are following everything that I am suggesting. And if not, make sure that you work on those things. That's personally what I would do if I was watching this presentation. Okay, so let me give you a scenario and I'm going to give you a few different scenarios throughout this presentation. So let's say that you shared your Etsy's link on your Instagram stories. A person has clicked on that link and now they are browsing through your Etsy shop. What can you do to turn that person into a customer? You, t you can say, Julia, I don't have social media. I don't promote my social media, uh, my Etsy on social media. Well, let's just say that someone finds your Etsy shop somehow. Either someone um, sends your Etsy shop link to a friend or you even send your Etsy shop link to somebody. Let's just say that someone lands on your Etsy page. What can you do to turn that person into an actual shopper? So things that matter and things that people are going to be paying attention to is clarity, organization, first photo, and a trustworthy shop. So let's talk more about those things. First, we have clarity. So make it very clear what you sell on your Etsy shop. As soon as the person clicks on your shop, they need to know exactly what you sell. This is why it is important for you to have a niche. Yesterday on my Instagram stories, I talked a little bit about this, how I believe that you should have a specific niche. Don't, don't just sell a little bit of everything and 
you know, see, I, what I said is don't throw things at the wall and see what sticks. So don't just sell anything and see what sells. I personally believe in having a niche and that's one of the reasons why it is important because as soon as someone clicks on your Etsy shop, they need to have clarity of exactly what you what you sell. They need to know exactly what your Etsy shop is all, all about. So you can use your banner, your headline, and announcements to communicate that. So let me give you an example of actually one of my clients. She's a client and a student. I actually just sent her her Etsy shop critique on Tuesday, but she's also a student of mine. I don't know if she's watching this live right now, but she, the overall look of her Etsy shop looks really, really good. And I even mentioned that during her Etsy shop critique. So this is what I mean when I want you guys to show exactly what you sell. So looking at her Etsy shop banner, she already has a text saying jewelry and accessories. Then she has photos of what she sells, of her scrunchies, her necklace, her ring. On her headline, she says unique jewelry and accessories. And under her announcements, she also talks about what she sells. I am a huge fan of using your banner to communicate to people what you sell on your Etsy shop. I think that if you don't do this yet, maybe it's something that you should be thinking about because right here, bam, as a, as a shopper, as someone who's browsing through Etsy, I can already tell what I'm going to find on her Etsy shop. I know what she sells. I know what her style is. And on her headline, she's telling me that she sells unique jewelry and accessories on her banner with the text she's telling me. So if you don't do this yet, make sure you do it. And when, if you sell a, like, as I was saying, a little bit of everything, shoppers are not really going to know what your Etsy shop is all about. And I always say, if you confuse them, you lose them. If a shopper is confused about your shop and what items they can find throughout your Etsy shop, then you're going to lose them. You don't want to lose them. You don't want to lose their focus, their attention. You want them to browse through your Etsy shop and potentially click on something that they like. So definitely do this throughout your Etsy shop if you're not doing it yet. Keep your product section organized. This is actually a screenshot of my own section for my Etsy shop. So help shoppers find exactly what they are looking for and always categorize your listings and keep your sections organized. One of my number one tips for my clients when I'm doing their Etsy shop critiques is to have their sections really, really organized. What I mean by that is, for example, for hours, always start with the season that you are selling at this time. So right now we're trying to sell our Christmas collection and our fall collection. So always move that up. And let's say when Valentine's Day season comes up and you have a Valentine's Day collection, make sure that you put that on top. You can move up your product section inside your Etsy, like Etsy shop manager. So make sure you do that. And then we start with our category. So we have nursery, custom art, then nursery printable. Instead of doing nursery custom art over here and then nursery printable over here, we put them together. And then what we did for the rest is baby shower, that's the category. And then in all caps, we did the type of item. So ba baby shower banner, baby shower invite. So if you want, you can do something like this, but make sure that it is very easy to find what the shopper wants and keep your categories together. If you have like gold bracelet, silver bracelet, pearl bracelet, those different sections, make sure that they are together or, you know, on top of each other. The first photo. So the first step is increasing the first step in increasing your conversion rate is getting shoppers to click on your actual listing. Let me just take a sip of my water. 
but if someone is looking at your Etsy homepage, that's already a visit that you're getting for your homepage. But in order for you to make that sale, the first step is that the person actually needs to click on your product, right? They need to click on your listing in order to make that purchase. And they're going to click on that listing if they like the first photo that they see. So the first photo should clearly show what the item should clearly show the item that's for sale and be eye-catching enough that buyers want to take a closer look. Pick a clear, neutral background, no distractions, and product cannot be cropped. So this, as an example, I chose this to show you because this seller is using text. And you should not be afraid of using text on your photos if necessary. So let's say that this seller did not use the text that she's using. She just has the photo of her items over here. It doesn't really tell me what the item is. I might be able to read this, the 45 self-discovery journal prompt, or it might just look a little bit small if I'm looking it over here. Like let's say that this photo, this photo, these items are over here. It might just be a little small for me to read this part over here. So adding big texts like printable workbook, self-discovery prompts, this, tell, this tells me exactly what the item is. I can see that it is a printable workbook, so it is a digital item, and it is a self-discovery prompt. So don't be afraid of using text, especially if you sell digital items. Obviously, if you sell a bracelet, like you don't, don't, say bracelet on the photo these types of items you can clearly show them through photography like she's doing right here but if you sell digital items or just something that you feel like through your photography through your first photo you can't really communicate what your item is don't be afraid of using text and as i said pick a clear slash neutral background without distractions a big mistakes that i see Etsy sellers doing is that they get too focused on their prompt, not prompts. Yeah, prompts. Or is that how you say it? Yeah. No, there's another word for it. Props. Prop, not prompt. Props. <laughs> People get too caught up with their props. So let's say that they're selling this, this ring and then they have like a flower right here. Well, the ring looks very small compared to the flowers. Like as a shopper, my eyes are going to your flower, not to your ring. And the item that you're selling should be the main thing of the photo. So I always recommend that if you're not to, if you're just starting with your Etsy or if you haven't had much practice with photography, do not use props. You have to be really good at photos to make props look good and not distracting. Props can be great to set the tone, set the mood, set the aesthetic of your Etsy shop, but if you're not too comfortable with photography yet, I recommend not using props, just using a clear background. So for example, she uses different backgrounds. She uses marble, she uses linen, but she doesn't really use prop. It's just a plain, neutral background and my attention is going to the item and then product cannot be cropped sometimes that's also something that i see etsy sellers doing where they zoom in too much on the item and when they're seeing and when a shopper is seeing their first photo either through the home page or the search bar for example like they see this brace bracelet over here the bracelet's very zoomed in where like this part is being cropped on the photo. That is a big mistake with photography. That's a photo no-no. You wanna make sure that the shopper can see your entire item, that absolutely nothing around it or nothing about the item is cropped. There's truly really so much that goes into photography. I could honestly do an entire class just talking about it, 
during my critique, photography is a topic that I spend a lot of time talking about. I have a whole module talking about photography inside the course. So there's a lot that goes into it, but these are the things that you really, really need to be, be paying attention to. So make sure that the shopper under just through your first photo, the shopper needs to understand what your item is. Make sure that the photo is eye catching, pick a clear neutral background without props and make sure that the item is not cropped. Those are the things that you really should be paying attention to when it comes to your first photo. And here are a few other examples of first photos from other Etsy sellers. So for example, April notes, she sells the robe and it's just a robe on a model, no distractions, nothing, just the item. And then a measured event, she's selling these printable birthday party invitations. And with text, she says, print or send via text or email. So as a shopper, when I see this image, I can tell what the item is, what can I use it for? I have to download it, it's a printable item, or I can send it via text or email. So as I said, don't be afraid of using text if necessary. Okay, Tr uh, trustworthy shop. That's also another thing that you need to be paying attention to when it comes to conversion rate and to getting people to actually purchase your item when they're looking at your Etsy shop. So have a complete about section, have a picture of you and have shop policies. Something that can be happening if you don't have a lot of sales yet, if you don't have a lot of reviews yet, yet, is that shoppers don't necessarily trust you yet just because they know you don't have a lot of experience. And that's totally normal. We All the new Etsy sellers, we all go through this where in the beginning it's a very slow growth because you don't have a lot of sales, you don't have a lot of reviews yet, and that's okay. So until you accumulate those sales and those reviews and shoppers feel may be more comfortable purchasing from you. These are three things that you can do to help shoppers trust you. So have a complete about section, have a picture of you. That's a very small detail, but it does matter for shoppers because they wanna know that there's a person behind this Etsy shop. So this one again, as an example, she has a picture of her. Instead of just having her logo again, which I see a lot of people doing, they just include a picture of their logo have a picture of you so shoppers know that there's an actual person behind this business and have your shop policies. Those are, are three small things that you can do that can help create a trust, trustable relationship between you and the shopper. Okay, so that was the first scenario. People are finding you through your homepage, they're scrolling through your homepage. How can you get shoppers to even just click on your listing to click on your product. Now let's talk about the second scenario, which is through the search page. So let's say that a person searched for Christmas stocking on the Etsy search bar. How will you stand out from your competition and get the person to click on your product? I think for a lot of us, especially us that are not promoting our Etsy shop on social media, people are really going to find you through your search page. So how can you get people to just click on your item when they see you on the search page, on the search page? There are a few things that matter and us as sellers, we need to make sure that we're doing a good job with. So there are on the search page, I, I did Christmas stocking and I took a screenshot of these three listings that were right next to each other. So as an Etsy shopper, what am I looking at? Well, first things first, I am looking at the first photo, right? That's the biggest thing about it. That's where my eyes go to. We already talked about the first photo. So first photo is not just important for your homepage, but especially for the search page. Then we have the title. We have the first phrase of your title. That's important. We have your reviews, we have your price, we have your special offer, and we have your shipping. So those are the things that people are going to be looking at when they find you through the search page. 
So let's talk about it. As I said, first photo, we already mentioned that. Title, review, price, special sales, and shipping. Let's first start with title. Now on the search page, you can only see the first sentence of the title. This is something new that Etsy started doing. If you write your titles like Etsy suggests you to do and I suggest you to do, which is a phrase, comma, space, and then another phrase, what's going to happen is Etsy is only going to show the first sentence of your title. So let me show you an example. I had Christmas stocking. Okay. All right. This is a good example. So for example, this Etsy seller, she is, I don't know if she's doing this on purpose or if, if she has always done this, but if you click on her title or if you click on her listing to look at the title, you will see that she's using the comma, but she's not separating each sentence. So that is why you can see her entire or, you know, other not just the first sentence, but you can start to see the second sentence over here. But let me see this one as an example. Maybe she uses just one word. Let me see. Okay, this is a good example. So this Etsy seller, she is writing her phrase. She is writing her sentence and then she's using comma, then she's separating and then writing another phrase. And then if you look at the Etsy search bar, now you can only see the first sentence, the first phrase of her title. So if you're writing your titles like this, which I recommend that you do, because Etsy says that that is the best practice for SEO, that means that people are now only going to see the first sentence of your title. So that means now that more than ever, the very first sentence of your title is very important. You need to describe what your product is and what makes it special. So really pack that first sentence with the details of your product, what your product is and what makes it special. So if I was selling Christmas stockings, I would do my first sentence like this, personalized embroidered Christmas stocking. I'm saying what my item is, I'm saying that it is personalized, and I'm saying what makes it special. So now, don't write just like a sentence with two or three words. Really pack that first sentence with details about your product because again, the person is only going to be see, the shopper is only going to see the first sentence of your listings. So make sure you packing them with a lot of information. Then we have review. I'm also not going to be spending a lot of time talking about review because there's a lot that goes into customer service and how to get reviews on Etsy, how to answer negative reviews, how to get people to change their negative review to a positive review, which I talk about it inside my course. But Reviews are one of the main things that shoppers will look at. So again, if you're looking at the search page, people will be able to see how many stars you have. And if you have a low rate, I can guarantee to you, not a lot of people are going to be clicking on your listing. So focus on customer service and experience. And my number one tip for people that are trying to get reviews, we personally don't ask people for reviews. We don't message our shoppers for review. But what we do is we ship our items faster than the, what they were expecting. So we set our processing time to four to five days, but we actually ship the item the next day. That way shoppers get their item, item faster than what they thought. And our main review comments are about our fast shipping. Number one comment. If you sell digital items, if you don't offer faster shipping, then I really recommend really taking your customer service to the next level. That's really going to help with your reviews. Then we have 
price. If if I if you feel like I'm rushing through this and I'm just going through points really fast is because as I said there's a lot for us to go through, but I'm really trying to mention the most important things about each category. So, let's talk about price. Again, that's something that people are going to look at when they find your item through the search page, especially when they're seeing your item next to your competitors. The price is something that they're going to be comparing. So when determining the price, I recommend that you first do your market research and see how much your competitors are charging. That's a big question that I get. How much should I charge for my item? Am I charging too much? Am I charging too little? What's a good price? There are a lot, a lot of calculations that you can do and there's also some stuff that you should be looking into, but hands down, the most important thing is that you have to make sure that your price is similar to your competitors because if you are charging way too much compared to your competitors, what's the reason why you're charging that price? Is it because your um, item is has extra um, has better quality? Is it because it is personalized? Your, your competitors are not personalized? Or is it because you're spending a lot of money on materials? Maybe you should look somewhere else for your material and for your supplies that you're using to create your items. It is very, very important that your price is similar to your competitors. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard for you to make a sale unless you have a good reason to why your item is more expensive. Then, after calculating your expenses and how much time you're putting into it, determine your price. And keep in mind that you can always change your price. I honestly, you guys, price is don't be too caught up on it. It's like, I feel like a lot of times people think too much into it. They're like, I can't start selling or I can't start listing my items until I figure out the perfect price, the exact price that I should be charging. Most of the time you're going to start with a price and you're probably going to end up changing it. Maybe you figure it out, you know, my revenue is too small or sorry, my profit's too small. I want to increase that or I found another material that's cheaper. Now I can uh, lower my price. Don't be too caught up on it. You can always change your price. And also keep in mind that some items have a very low profit by nature. I was just talking about this to a friend actually. He's selling on Etsy and I'm helping him out. He is doing print on demand and he was telling me, am I even charging the right price because my profit is really small. I'm only profiting like two, um, three, four dollars out of an item that I'm charging $25 for. And that's the nature of print on demand because you're paying a company to make your items. So naturally you will have a low profit. So also keep that in mind. But something that I also want to mention about price and that's very important is do not fool the shopper. A lot of times what I see happening is I'm going to take these as an example. I don't know if that's the case because I, I didn't really do, I didn't look at these items too much. But sometimes what happens is let's say that this person, again, I'm not saying that this is the case. I don't know. But you see how this item is 668 and this item is 1913. Technically, if you look at the photo, if you look at the title, they're pretty similar. They're stockings, they're personalized with the name, they are embroidered. So why is this item much cheaper than this one? Sometimes what people will do is that they'll list their item and then the starting price will be 668, but the 668 is just a stocking, no personalization. And then if you want the personalization, it's actually $20. But if a shopper is looking at this first price, they see 668 and they see your personalization, they see that your stockings are personalized through your title. When they click on it, they actually see that 668 is just the stocking, no personalization. That is a huge turn off to shoppers. Do not do that. It, just because you're trying to get people to click on your item because technically you have a lower price, that will mess up your conversion rate because that makes people mad. They know that you're trying to fool them and that's a huge turnoff. If you 
like in the situation, if she is selling simple stockings without personalization, then make a separate listing for that. Don't start your price like this. This can be happening for many situations. I don't know what your situation is, but do not fool the shopper. Start with the correct price because if you're not doing that, then that can be messing up with your conversion rate. But overall with price, because people are going to be comparing prices in the search page because they're going to see your item next to your competitors, just make sure that you're charging a price that is similar to your competitors. Okay, then special sales. That is something that people are also going to be able to see. And let me just go over here. So for example, they can see that this person is doing a 45% off, they're doing 55. This person is not doing a sale at all. Running a sale can make your listing stand out from the competition in search results. But remember, sales are special offers and shouldn't happen frequently. You don't have to do sales all the time. It should really be a special thing that you do once in a while. What I actually recommend is that you look into Etsy community and participate in their sales events. So every once in a, in a while, but especially now during the holiday season, where is it here? Etsy does sale events. So I'll share this one with you guys. Etsy is doing a cyber sale that's happening between October 23rd and November 29th. This means that Etsy is going to be promoting the sale a lot on their social media. They might do commercials on TV about it. So if you want to participate on this big sale that Etsy is doing, and probably Etsy is going to get a lot of traffic throughout these days because they're going to be promoting the sale, then I recommend looking, looking into it and participating on the sale. Over here with this article, they explain what you need to do. Um, if you don't look into Etsy community, 100% recommend that you do because over there, they're always talking about announcements or anything new going on. So if you don't know when to do sales, I recommend looking into doing sales when Etsy is doing events like these. Should you offer free shipping? Because again, that is something that people, let me close this. That is something that people are going to be able to see for your listing if you offer free shipping or not. So if possible, yes. Consider adding some of your shipping costs into the item price so you can lower what you charge for shipping. As I always say, shipping, free shipping is actually not free. If you're buying an item that says free shipping, you are not paying for shipping, but that shopper, if they're doing their calculations right, they have included that shipping cost into the cost of their product. So you are actually paying for shipping, it's just that cost is inside the cost of the item. So if possible, that's what I, what I recommend you to do. Instead of charging for shipping, just include that shipping cost into the cost of the item and then do free shipping. Shipping price is also a factor in Etsy search ranking. So listings that ship for free in shops that offer a United States free shipping guarantee gets priority US search placement in the Etsy app. And digital download items are also eligible for priority search placement in the Etsy app because they don't have any shipping costs. So not only offering free shipping helps with your conversion rate and getting people to click on your listings, but it can also help with your placement and with your ranking. So highly, highly suggest that you think about offering free shipping if you don't yet, because that can very much help you. What you have to think about really is how on the search page, the search page is a very competitive place, right? When I searched for Christmas stockings, I mean, you're going to see 500, 562,000 listings on the search page. You have a lot of competition. The question here is, how are you going to stand out from your competition? Why would a shopper choose to click on your product 
instead of your competitor. And every little detail matters. Maybe it's the title, maybe it's the number of reviews, maybe it's the price, or maybe it is that you offer free shipping. Maybe the shopper is between your item and your competitor's item. Everything is pretty similar. The 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 design, the price, the reviews, but you have free shipping and your competitor doesn't and the shopper can see that over here, they might choose to purchase from you just because of that free shipping. So every little detail that you do with your Etsy shop matters. You might be sitting over there and thinking, it doesn't matter if I have a picture of myself on my homepage, it doesn't matter if I have an about section, it doesn't matter if I have free shipping or not, but if there's something that I've learned with my nine years of being on Etsy and helping literally hundreds of people with their Etsy shop by doing critiques, by having my Etsy course, what I've learned is when it comes to standing out from the crowd, every little detail matters. Every little thing that you do about your Etsy shop, every little thing that you do about your listing will matter. So that's why I'm suggesting you guys to consider doing free shipping. Okay, so now we have talked about a person finding your homepage and we have talked about a person finding you through the search page. It all comes down to the, the person seeing your listing. So now let's focus on your listing and what should you be doing with your listing in order to truly convert that view and visit into sale because until now, we have talked about truly how to get people to click on your item, not even how to make a sale. We have talked about first step, how to get people to even click on your item. Now we're going to be talking about, okay, the person is looking at your listing. How are you going to convert that into a sale? So few things that will matter here. We have your photo variations, and this is an example of my own listing. We have photo variations. We're going to have the rest of your title, we're going to have your description, and underneath we also have uh, production time and shipping cost. If you don't offer free shipping, then the person can see how much you are going to charge for shipping over here. So everything that I just said, let's talk about photo variations. So we obviously already talked about your first photo. And what I like to say is that the first photo is to grab their attention and then your photo variations is to actually make the sale. If you've been following me for a while, you have heard me saying this before. Photography and SEO are the most important things about your Etsy shop. SEO to get you found on Etsy and your photo variations to make a sale. At the end of the day, no matter how good your price is, no matter if you offer free shipping, literally nothing else matters if your photos don't look good, at least if they don't look decent. No one's going to shop from you online if your photos don't look good. So it is so, so, so important that you guys pay attention to your photos. So your listing photos should grab attention and persuade buyers to click and purchase. That's the first photo display the product clearly, give details about material, size, and color, capture the purpose of your product, and help shoppers imagine the product in their lives. These two over here are two things that I think a lot of people miss. Capture the purpose of your product. I was actually just talking to a student of mine like two, three days ago. She's having issues with her conversion rate. I checked out her Etsy shop. When I look at her photos, I had no idea what her product was for. I could see what the product is, but what is this for? Like, how can I use this in my life? Like, is this, like, I had no idea what the product was for. And that's why you need to be showing what the item can be used with your photography. Going back to if you confuse them, you lose them. If a shopper is confused about what the heck is this product? How can I use this? Forget it. They're not going to shop from you. They're going to exit out of your Etsy shop. And also help shoppers imagine the product in their lives. I do not care what you sell. 
you have to have a lifestyle photo. A lifestyle photo is your product being used. So do you sell a nursery wall art? Make sure that you have a mock-up of a nursery and your digital wall art on that nursery mock-up. Do you sell bracelets? Make sure that you have at least one photo of you or a model wearing that bracelet. Have a lifestyle photo to show to help shoppers imagine how the product can be would look like in their lives. That is the most important photo um, style, in my opinion, a lifestyle photo. That photo is what's going to sell your product because shoppers will imagine this item in their lives. How can they use this? Um, where will I place this? Or when will I wear this? It's a very, very important photo variation. Here is a quick example that I want to share with you. Okay, so this seller sells bracelets. So the first photo is just uh, what we call a group shot with just the different bracelets that you can choose from. Then she has a flat lay. That's what we call a flat lay. Then she has a photo. It's basically the first photo, but then she's telling you, okay, this is the Kirby. This is the rope. This is the vintage mesh. If you do group photos, make sure that you specify which one's which because when I go to click on which one I want, you have to be able to tell me which style is which. Then she continues to do it. Another one, another flat lay. Uh, this is a detail shot and this is the packaging shot. Something else that I also want to mention about your photo variations is don't bore the shopper. I see a lot of Etsy sellers saying that, oh, I list all 10 photo variations. I'm good with that. But then when I look at their listings, it's basically the same photo over and over again. It's like you sell this bracelet, you're taking a photo a little bit close, a little bit far, a little bit sideways, a little bit up, a little bit down. It's like, that's boring. You're just doing the same thing over and over again. Meanwhile, as you can see this Etsy seller, for example, she has this flat lay and this flat lay and this one. They're all flat lays, but they're all different from each other. One's a little bit more zoomed in, one's positioned differently. So make sure that, or this one, this one's completely different from this one. So make sure that your photos are different from each other and that you are exciting shoppers with your photos. Again, there's... I'm thinking about so many things that I want to say about photos because there is a lot when it comes to photography, but definitely these, I would say, are the most important things. The rest of your title, because now when a shopper clicks on your listing, they'll be able to read the rest of your phrases, the rest of your title. So you can talk about what the item is, what makes it special, how is it made, the size, the color, and the material. So those are all things that you can be talking about throughout your title that's going to help shoppers understand what your item is. And then description, similar to what I just said, describing your item, but obviously with description, you're gonna go into way more detail. So just like pictures, your description needs to answer all the questions shoppers might have. So follow this list for your description. Make sure you're talking about size, color, material, care instruction, how to order, production time, shipping time, and return policy. Make sure you have all of those under your description. For this one, I'll show you as an example. Oh. I guess I clicked out. Let me go back really quick. Also, I apologize. I see with my own, uh, with my phone that I'm watching myself, there are ads throughout this live. There shouldn't be any ads. I'm so sorry. I guess I 
forgot to click when I was setting up the live. I don't do, I try not to do my lives with any ads. So I'm sorry about that. But here is her description. So she's giving you all the details, but also very important about your description is that you are categorizing each section. So she says, order instructions, order instructions, and then she talks about it. Then she has personalization service, then she talks about it. Add on charms, blah, 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 other details, processing time, shipping time. So whenever you're talking about each topic for your description, make sure you're actually separating them so it's easier for shoppers to read and to find the information that they're looking for. Okay, then another thing that they'll be looking at is your processing time. Shoppers on Etsy are often looking for gifts or may need something for a special event by a certain date. So your processing time may influence a buyer's purchase decision. Keep shoppers' expectations in mind when setting your processing time and try to avoid unnecessary padding of your processing time. People want their items fast, like Amazon Prime. They expect us Etsy sellers to be like Amazon Prime. So ship your item as fast as possible. Again, going back to every single detail matters. If they are between your bracelet and your competitor's bracelet, the only difference is your competitor will ship the item fast, they might buy it from your competitor. So processing time, just make sure it's quick, as quick as you can do it. I was talking to a client of mine and I was telling her that her processing time is very long. It was saying that the, the item was going to arrive in 30 days. That's a very long time. I you know, talked to her about maybe making it shorter, trying to make it, trying to make it quicker because that can be a reason processing time and shipping time, or sorry, processing time and shipping cost, which we'll talk about next, can be a huge reason why shoppers are not buying from you. They like your item, they click on your item, they like what they see, but your processing time is too long or maybe your shipping is too expensive. That's a huge, huge turnoff to shoppers. And shipping. A shopper who loved your listings when they clicked on it from search could be turned off by expensive shipping. In a 2018 survey, some Etsy shoppers said that they were 50% less likely to buy an item if they thought the price of shipping was even a little bit more expensive than, than what they were used to. Check out your competitors. If your competitors are selling the same thing as you are, but their shipping is cheaper than yours, you gotta understand why. If you're shipping from like the same country and the price is the same, the price of the item is the same, but your shipping is way more expensive than theirs, you need to be figuring out why. You Maybe you need to switch your um, material cost, not material cost, packaging cost, or where you're shipping your items, where you're buying your shipping labels, you need to be doing more research because there's no reason why you should be, you are charging more than your competitor. I get this question a lot actually, when people are like, I'm charging $7 for shipping and my competitor is trying $3. I don't know why. You need to be, you need to do more digging. You need to do more research and figure out how you can make your shipping less expensive because that can be a huge, huge turnoff. Okay, two tips that I have for you guys. Number one, if you are promoting your shop on social media, your followers need to be your target market. This is a huge mistake that I see people making where they are promoting their Etsy shop on social media, but when they go on their stories or maybe even see, even see my packaging, those types of content, you're targeting other small business owners, you're targeting other Etsy sellers, which means, which means, which means, they want to shop from you, but because they want to see what you sell and what your Etsy shop looks like. So if you are promoting your, or, or, 
targeting other small business owners. That's a huge mistake that I see people making where their content is targeting other Etsy sellers and other business owners. You don't want that. You want to target your target market, the people that are shopping from you. So for example, for my social media, I need to target brides to be and moms to be because they are my are my what's going to happen is let's see this is um i can't think of a better exam example this is not that good but just follow me let's say that you're selling a wall art and for your type 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 R is a searchable word. It's something that people search for a lot. It's not something that people would buy for their nursery. Maybe they would buy it for their living room, but not for their nursery. So people might find you and they even might click on your listing, but when they look at your design, they're like, this is not for nursery, and they click out. So don't use search terms just because you know people are searching for them. Actually use terms that relate to your item. Okay, so let's recap. I did different columns for you guys to visualize. So what shoppers will see on your homepage? Those are the things they need to be paying attention to. Clarity, organization, first photo, trustworthy shop. What shoppers will see on the search page? First photo, title, review, price, special sales, and free shipping. What shoppers will see on your listing? Photo variation, the rest of your title, description, processing time, and shipping. Those are all the details, all the little things or big things that you need to be paying attention to when it comes to your conversion rate. Okay, I did it in under 60 minutes. <laughs> Okay, so that is what I have for you guys. I will, oh, you guys were saying that it's glitching. I'm sorry. Let me zoom in myself and I'll take the time to answer some questions. I'm sorry, it was glitching. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the ads that, that were playing. I'm so sorry. Okay. If you guys have any questions for me, I'll take a little bit um, of time to answer them. Let me read through your comments to see if you guys have any questions. Okay, I see someone saying 50-50 I hear on first photo. Half say use just a studio shot. Others say to use a lifestyle shot with props. Lifestyle shot is not necessarily a photo with props. I agree. It could be great for you to use a lifestyle shot as your first photo. That way people know exactly what your item is. But a lifestyle shot is, for example, you taking a photo of your bracelet on your arm. Just like I showed you as an example for the other Etsy seller. Another lifestyle shot can be, um, let me think like your candle lit, like with the flame, not necessarily a candle with a bunch of stuff on the background, but just your candle with the flame. So again, lifestyle doesn't necessarily mean with prop, it just means your product being used. Here's another one that I, just because a lot of my clients and students sell digital items, I see a lot of people, for example, they, 
have a nursery wall art and they use a nursery mock-up. So here's a mock-up and your photo is like over here on the wall. What a lot of people will do is they will have their first photo like this. And then when you see the photo on the search page or your home page, the the wall art itself is going to, it looks really small because you are focusing on showing the entire mock-up. You're focusing on showing the entire nursery, the entire background, while the actual wall art, what you sell, looks really small on the photo. What you want to do is actually zoom in and show the wall art. So if you want to use props, you can. If you want to use props to show what your item is and what your item can be for, for your very first photo, that's totally okay. Just make sure that the prop is smaller than the product, that the main focus here is not the prop, but the item that you are selling. What camera do you use for your photos? I don't know the name of the camera. It's like a professional camera, but you don't need a camera, you guys. You can honestly just do it on your phone. Like nowadays, iPhones have amazing camera. And I mean, the majority of our items, well, 50-50 of our items is digital and we just use mock-ups. Highly recommend using mock-ups. It's so easy and it just makes your listing creation process much faster. Um, but for our physical items, we do use a camera. I just don't know which one it is. It's like a Canon something, but you don't need a camera. In my opinion, you can literally just use your iPhone. The important thing is that you are editing and curating your photos. For example, when we take our photos on the camera and when we put it on our computer, the photo itself looks very dark. The quality is good, but the photo is dark and we use Photoshop to brighten up our photo. So you always have to curate your photos a little bit and make sure that they're bright. Mm. How would you do a lifestyle shot of a small art item like a painted rock in a stand? That's up to you. You got to think for your shopper and for your target market. Think about, okay, what would my shopper use this painted rock for? Like, why am I selling this? Is this a decoration? Is this like a book, book holder? Not book holder. Book hold? No, it's like when you put the item like against the book so it holds it. Like why would someone shop this rock? What is it for? Or is it a gift? Um, it's up to you. Whatever your product can be used for, whatever you think your target market would be using your rock for, take a picture like that. Because again, as I mentioned, that's a main thing that people are doing wrong. It's like you're selling the rock as someone like I might find your rock and I might be like, this is a beautiful design, gorgeous, love it. But what would I use this for? It's up to you as a seller to show me the shopper why do I need this item and what would I use it for? Title should be separated by comma and space in between or just comma. Etsy recommends that you do comma and then separate it. That's what I, by being an Etsy U instructor and working with the Etsy education team, that's something that they always taught us is to do comma and then separate it. So that's also what I recommend you guys to do. If Etsy is telling us that that's the best practice, that's probably the best practice for you, for you to do. Would you recommend ads for a brand new one month old store? No. In the very beginning, especially like the first month of your Etsy shop, 
don't worry about Etsy ads. Focus on photography and SEO, really mastering Etsy SEO, especially Etsy SEO, like um, watch YouTube videos, buy courses, um, do your research on Etsy SEO, focus on that first and see how well that does because you might not even need Etsy ads. We are an example of that. I've been sharing our journey with our new Etsy shop with you guys. We started it in April and like last month we hit over $2,600 in sales literally just with Etsy SEO, no ads, no social media. And our sales keep increasing every single month and we're not planning on spending money with Etsy ads anytime soon. So don't focus on ads yet, focus on Etsy SEO. And also as a new shopper, or sorry, as a new seller, you're probably still trying to figure out photography. Uh, you don't have that many reviews yet. You don't have that many sales. So even if Etsy brings you traffic through Etsy ads, you might not convert those views into sales just because maybe your photos don't look good yet. And that's okay. Like every new Etsy seller has bad photos. So you want to focus on making your Etsy shop look good before you spend money on traffic. And also for now as well, just focus on Etsy SEO. You might have answered this, but I came a little late. I have a crafting page with 8,000 followers, but I don't have a specific Instagram page for products. Do you think having one would help? Yes. As I mentioned in the uh, at the end of this class, if you're promoting your Etsy shop on social media, make sure that the people that are watching your stories, seeing your posts are your Etsy shop's target market. And it seems from what you said, it seems like the people that are following you on Instagram are people that are interested in crafting. They're not necessarily interested in what you sell on Instagram or sorry, they don't are not necessarily interested in what you sell on Etsy. I don't know what you sell on Etsy, but if you if you're tar on Social media, if you're targeting people that are interested about learning about craft or learning about crafting and how to do crafting and how to sell crafting, they might not be interested in what you sell on Etsy. So yes, I recommend having a page just targeting people that are would be interested in what you sell on Etsy. Okay, a lot of people are asking about SEO. I'm not going to spend time talking about SEO here because this is a conversion rate class. If you are highly interested in learning about SEO and mastering Etsy SEO, highly, highly recommend that you take a look at the Females Connection course. I have a whole module just talking about uh, SEO and how to specifically write your titles, tags, how to find keywords, how to write your description, everything about SEO. I have a whole module just talking about it. And as a student, you also have access to me to answer, to ask all of your questions. So make sure you check that out if you are really interested in, interested in mastering your SEO. Okay, I'm trying to see if there is any specific questions about conversion rate. Uh, I'll answer one last one. And then if you guys have any questions, you can always DM me on Instagram. Because I don't have an income from Etsy yet, I usually spend a whole day making a bunch of new digital products. Would you recommend that I release all of them at once when done or over a few days? I recommend, I get this question a lot actually. I recommend that you list them little by little. 
there is this rumor that us Etsy sellers say that Etsy likes shops that are active. Shops that are listing every day, shops that are working on their Etsy shop every day. It's not proven. Etsy has never said if it's true or not, but I do believe it is. The more active you are, I always recommend my students, my clients to be as active as possible on Etsy. So if you are planning on listing a lot of things on Etsy, do it little by little because in Etsy's perspective, that's you being active a little bit every single day rather than you just being super active in one day and then disappearing for the rest of the month. It's better for you to, to uh, list two items today, one item tomorrow, two items on Saturday. That way you're active every single day. That's what I recommend and a lot of other Etsy sellers recommend as well. Okay. All right, you guys, I'm going to finish the live over here. I hope that it wasn't lagging too much. Again, I'm sorry about the ads that popped up throughout this live. I didn't mean to do that. If you guys have any questions, DM me on Instagram. If you are interested in the Females Connection course, the link is in the bio. And October 24th, I'm opening five spots for Etsy Shop Critiques. If you are someone who once answer to why your Etsy shop is not growing, what you are doing wrong, how can you fix your mistakes, and you need a mentor with a lot of experience to tell you what you're doing wrong and how to fix your mistakes so you can see improvement as soon as possible, I recommend that you look into the Etsy shop critiques. I will be going over your Etsy shop, your listings, and tell you exactly what to do in order to grow on Etsy. Again, I'm opening spots October 20, 24th. I'm only opening five spots, so they do tend to sell out. The link for it is in the bio for you to sign up for the wait list, and it is an investment of $165, which is a super small investment compared to what you will get in return. So if you are interested, if you want a mentor to help you out, make sure to check it out. And again, if you guys have any questions, Questions, DM me on Instagram and I hope that you guys have a good rest of your Thursday. Bye.